I'm Dale Baskin from DP Review. By now, most people know that the D810 is a great camera, but not everyone realizes that it has a sibling, the D810A, a model specifically optimized for astrophotography. So in this field test, we've come to the deserts of California to shoot with the Nikon D810 and D810A in a range of scenarios during the day and well into the night. We'll be joined by professional astronomer and photographer, Jose Francisco Salgado. With Jose Francisco's guidance, we'll explore both the technical and artistic sides of astrophotography and capture some stellar photos in the process. And by the time this video is over, we think we'll convince you that with a DSLR, a few fast lenses, and some inexpensive tracking equipment, you can capture some pretty amazing images of the universe. No million dollar telescope required. My name is Jose Francisco Salgado. I'm an astronomer and visual artist based in Chicago. What I'm doing is actually using the arts as a hook. Get people interested either in a photograph, in an artwork, in a film, and then get them interested in, in astronomy. To give you an example, there's a film called Moonrise about humankind's fascination with the moon. So for that, I traveled to the Bay of Fundy in Canada to photograph the most extreme lunar tides in the planet. And that led to photographing the Northern Lights to enrich these science and symphony films. During a photographic session, I have like three or four cameras and I'm constantly thinking, okay, do I stop this time-lapse sequence and move it in the other direction? So it's very, very challenging and you can spend the whole night doing that and, and you get incredible, incredible images. And people get excited when they learn about all these, all these details of objects in the sky, that it's not just mere pinpoints of light, but it's so much more. What we need to do astronomy is, of course, dark locations at high elevation because the higher you are, the less atmosphere you have above you. The atmosphere is turbulent, so that means that it makes images look blurry in dry places, and of course, really far away from, from city lights. In classic American tradition, we piled into an RV, hitting the road and heading away from Los Angeles, leaving the city and its bright lights in our rearview mirror. Our first destination is Trona Pinnacles, a formation of over 500 porous rock spires rising from the bed of a dry lake. They're a popular setting for Hollywood filmmakers, and you may recognize them from movies like Planet of the Apes. So we're out here in the middle of the California desert. We came a long way to try out the D810 and its companion, the D810A, which is really optimized for astrophotography. And this is a fantastic camera to shoot in this type of environment. It's weather sealed, it's just tough as nails. One of the things I'm really appreciating about this camera is compared to the D800 series cameras, it's got a much nicer grip. It's definitely a lot more comfortable to hold on to. The D810 is Nikon's highest resolution camera. It's built around a 36 megapixel full frame sensor with no anti-aliasing filter, ensuring the sharpest images possible. It features the highest dynamic range of any camera we've tested, making it a favorite for pros and enthusiasts across many applications, ranging from landscapes to weddings. The D810 has great live view implementation with improved resolution when magnifying an image. One of our favorite live view features is a useful tool in the form of a split screen allowing you to zoom in at opposite sides of an image to ensure level horizons. This tool can be particularly useful to landscape photographers. The camera also includes Nikon's 51-point autofocus system and features very effective 3D tracking. It can capture 1080 footage and can send an uncompressed signal out via HDMI, giving you the flexibility to capture both still and moving images. As soon as the Nikon DA10A was announced, I got really interested in it because of course it's an astrophotography camera, right? It's very, very sensitive to hydrogen alpha light, which is the light given by nebulas in, in the sky. With some clouds in the sky and the sun directly overhead, we thought it would be a great opportunity to capture some infrared images of the stark desert landscape. We got some IR shots using a filter that blocks the visible light, so it lets only IR light to go through the filter and be captured by the sensor. Since you're not capturing blue light and you're capturing more like red light, then the sky is gonna look really dark. As the sun dropped below the horizon, our thoughts turned to capturing some stars. This trip is the first time that I used the Nikon DA10A strictly for astrophotography with no auroras. 
Our first step was to decide which part of the night sky we wanted to shoot with the D810A. Using a smartphone app, we were able to see what was in the sky above us, but also what was below the horizon so we could anticipate what was coming. You see the handle of the Big Dipper? Sure do. So you say, follow the arc to Arcturus. It's a mnemonic. When it comes to astrophotography, you can do two kinds. One is like the deep sky astrophotography, where you're focusing features in the sky, like the Andromeda galaxy or some features where there's a lot of nebulosity. But then there's also the other kind of astrophotography where it's the wide field astrophotography where you want the beauty of the night sky, but in the context of a beautiful landscape. The next step was focusing. In this scenario, we used the Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 lens to capture broad views of the sky framed by the landscape. After taking a few test shots to confirm focus, Jose Francisco let us in on an astronomer's pro tip. Use a bit of gaff tape to lock down your focus. Get a little bit of the ring and a little bit of the lens that it's fixed. Okay, so we're using the remote control, so that way we reduce vibration. It turns out that Los Angeles is a pretty big place, and despite driving several hours from the city, we were challenged by a significant amount of light pollution. Now let's take a look. Instead of fighting the artificial light, we decided to embrace it. What we did was use the light pollution, mostly coming from LA, to actually photograph nice silhouettes of the features of you know, the Trona pinnacles. And we got some pretty dramatic shots where we see the silhouettes, the light pollution, some clouds, and then above all of that, stars. The landscapes had an almost alien quality to them. And although we didn't capture any extraterrestrials, we were visited by a moth. The beat of its wings reflected in our headlamps. Following a late night of shooting, we were greeted by a brief but intense sunrise. Infused with caffeine, we headed off to shoot our next subject, wildflowers. So we came to a point where there's some really nice wildflower blooms. Jose's up here with a couple wide angles. Uh, we have some opportunity both to compress things against the background with a long lens. Uh, there's some really nice color off in the distance here in these hills too. We continued our journey and headed for the Alabama Hills, an area of unique rock formations in the shadow of the Sierra Nevada mountains. The sun is about to go right behind the horizon right now, and we're going to set it up with electronic first curtain, make sure we don't get any kind of a shake. We're going to expose for the highlights. We're not going to worry too much about whether or not we get good exposure in the shadows because we can pull those up later. The D810's low base ISO of 64 means it's possible to shoot with a longer exposure, allowing more light to hit the sensor. Compared to most cameras, this allows the D810 to capture almost an entire extra stop of light, providing exceptional dynamic range. In contrast, the D810A has lower dynamic range with its base ISO of 200. Probably not a big deal since most users will likely use it at night, where the better high ISO performance of the D810A will be an advantage. And a quick pro tip. When shooting high contrast scenes, enable the flat picture profile to help better visualize detail that would otherwise appear too dark on your LCD screen. With a bit of daylight left, we set off in search of one of the classic rock formations in the Alabama hills, the Mobius Arch. I was photographing the arch completely backlit. I took some bracketed images, and I also processed a single shot. The results are basically the same. That is, from a single shot, I was able to pull a lot of detail out of the shadows. So the dynamic range of the, of the camera is very impressive. Then we played with artificial uh, lighting, so it was with an LED panel, and took some, some single shots during twilight, and that led to a time-lapse sequence of Orion crossing the sky behind the Mobius Arch. And then, of course, I was very excited about uh, testing the Vixen Polari mount. This is a mount that lets you take uh, long-exposure astrophotographs by compensating for the Earth's rotation and basically tracks object in the sky. That lets you photograph an exposure time of eight minutes. So we have here the Orion belt, the sword with the Orion nebula. You see the, the sword of Orion? Well, the central star of the sword is not actually a star, it's a nebula. It's a giant cloud of gas and dust where stars are forming. 
And when you start using you know, longer and longer focal lengths, you can actually see more and more structure. A longer exposure means it's possible to gather more light. And thanks to the D810A's unique ability to set exposure for up to 900 seconds, it's possible to do so without bulb mode. You mentioned to me earlier that you've been looking at pictures of the Horsehead Nebula your whole life. Yes, yeah, since and I was a little kid. Now we're sitting here with a DSLR shooting it. it with a, you know, with a telephoto lens. I mean, we're photographing the cosmos. It's, it's actually, it's quite, uh, quite impressive. And to know that, for example, in that little cloud, stars are being formed. Altogether, Jose Francisco was able to create spectacular shots that made our jaws drop. It was a fitting close to our desert adventure. By now, we hope we've convinced you that with a DSLR, a few fast lenses, and some inexpensive tracking equipment, you can capture some pretty amazing images of the universe. And having a PhD astronomer by your side doesn't hurt. It's you, a spiral. It's a spiral wow. galaxy. Wow. Right. Yeah. I was very excited with the results because these are objects that I have been reading about since I was a kid because they, I mean, they're, they're very popular astronomy targets. But you know, nothing like you taking your own photograph of, of these objects. And I was very, very impressed with the quality. I mean, I have pushed the ISO very, very high to photograph not only the night sky, but the northern lights. And I'm extremely impressed with the quality, low noise, and high dynamic range. On the other hand, for an astrophotography camera, I'm disappointed that the buttons in the back are not illuminated, you know, like in the D4, which is a camera that I use very, very often. These tools engage people and will make some young boy or girl to follow a career in science because of these tools, because the tools are available. You know, in a way, that's what happened to me. Jose Francisco has an obvious passion for both astronomy and photography, and it's inspirational to shoot side by side with someone who's so devoted to educating and inspiring others through his art. As a society, we need to be engaged in science. Why? Because so many policies depend on science. And if we have people <laughs> making decisions for us that do not understand science, we're in trouble. I feel truly lucky to have had this opportunity, and I've made a great friend in the process. I'm looking forward to our next photographic adventure together. For DP Review, I'm Dale Baskin.